Okay, he just got out of the hospital to come here. And he's going daily for dialysis while he's here. Now, this is a man who walks his talk, too. So let's, yeah. Let's see Clifford's kidneys rejuvenated and reborn. And with all of our minds and hearts, see it so, and it will be. So we ask for that in divine right order. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, you want this one or do you want that one? Well, let me, let me use this one here. After all these years, I'm still not organized, <clears throat> but that's okay. Uh, in all our, I am from Zuni, New Mexico, the Zuni, Zuni Nation. I am uh, a member of the Zuni tribe. We are the largest of the Indian Pueblos in New Mexico. Our Hopi, whoops, there it goes again. <laughs> our, our brothers are to the, in Arizona are called the Hopi the Hopi Indians in Arizona, they live up in the mesas. And uh, my background, and I think that some of you have probably seen me on different documentaries, I, I am uh, 70 earth years. I belong to the Sun Clan. I am also uh, become an elder. Uh, I, di I didn't like it at, at the beginning, but you know, time waits for no man. And I belong to the, what they what in Zuni is called a Galaxy Medicine Society, and I have been uh, born into that since I was about two or three days old. So, um, and also I belong to the uh, Kachina order of Zuni and various other groups. So my background in, in the white man's world is that I'm a uh, civil environmental engineer. I worked in environmental justice for a number of years, working with 561 various Indian tribes, federally recognized, and about 100, and I would say about 100 uh, state-recognized tribes, because some of them are only about five members each throughout the whole United States. But my, uh, my introduction to the Star Knowledge Conference was two years ago, 12, 12, 12. It was not the spirit had guided me to Carefree, and I, hadn't, I did not know about this group. I had heard about it, but I had never been there into any other sessions. But the spirit guided me over there to Carefree. I, was, I stumbled in there, and everybody said that they had been looking for me. And of course, uh, I, belong, I also belong to the, the clown society, the Heoka. And so, I'm, so I just did my Robin Williams, the late Robin Williams routine about, I said, I didn't do it. Uh, please call my attorney. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm innocent. I did not do it. But anyway, after I, they put me as part of the uh, speakers, and it was like something that occurred during that trip. I had just been down there in Tucson talking about flying saucers. And the day before, I was in Phoenix talking about the same subject about flying saucers. And it just so happened that the, the, the star knowledge people was, uh, the chief was over there, and of course the whole group there. So I became part of that family, and it was like a, uh, all of it, it was not by accident that I went there. And when I met some of you here, I knew that my purpose was to be part of this group here, it's a family now. You are my brothers, you are my sisters, you are my children. And also, the messages that have been given me all these years, and some of us are very reluctant. I am a very stubborn individual. I am curious, but at the same time, I am stubborn. And so, at this point in my life, I am 70 earth years. And uh, last week, when I went into a very traumatic experience, I, I met some of the, what I had been uh, perhaps been introduced to for a number of years and being a medicine man of my tribe. 
it was very it was very interesting in a way that it was an experience. I was on what the the uh, white people call morphine, and uh, I was so so uh, enjoyable, but it only lasted a lasted a few hours. And when I came back to, I wished that I had stayed in that stage. So I, now I know what, it, what these people do when they want to go on drugs. And so I always wonder about that. So now I am a druggie now. <laughs> <laughs> but my experience there was that uh, I had a lot of people pooling for me. Um, I, they found out about it. Those people that, are, uh, that do the walk that are now here among us, and I told one individual, and then the word went around, and, and they told me about it. What what we are we call angels, or they were uh, with us. And when I later on I asked him, uh, what were those beings, or what were those things? He said, "You mean to tell me that you don't even know who they are? And you talk about them all the time?" I said, "Well, I didn't want to admit it." So when Spirit said that you will be okay, go back there and continue. And it's just like, I hear a lot of these people that get into that. They said, oh, shucks, do I have to go back again? I, I, I want to be here. No, no, no. You have to go back again. Your, your job is not finished. So it is with great pleasure that I am here. And uh, I uh, talked to the, to the other Western doctors. They said, you, th you think it's okay? I said, yeah, we, you're okay. I said, you're a, you're a tough individual so I made sure that I came over here and I am so proud to be here with among my my family here and thank you very much for giving me the support now before before I go on uh, I would like to uh, open the prayer in all our meetings and all our get-togethers we all ask for guidance from our our uh, spirit world. So I will go through that. I will use my language. And after that, I will interpret. Thank you very much. You can sit down. I, um, in all our proceedings, uh, we ask for, uh, we are but humble people. We are but, we are but, uh, we ask for guidance in all our teachings, in all our prayers, all our systems. And it, I have asked the spirit people, we call them in different names, like I say, we call them angels, we call them space brothers, we call them ethereal beings. They are always among us, and they have never left us. They have been with us since the beginning of time. And they are here always. They will always be with us forever. And if you look at it from the other standpoint of what's going on in the world, they have been increased their inten intensity and activity in recent times because of what is going on, on on Mother Earth. You look at what's happening throughout the world. Uh, it's unrest. It is not for us to make any judgment, whether it's good or bad or wrong or, or right. We are of our people here. We are individual lights. For purposes of getting together here, we were guided here. I talked to a lot of people throughout my travels and throughout my 
presentations and throughout my meetings, we, I have met people like you that are present here. We do not fit anywhere, anywhere, any place, any time. We are all individuals. You are all light. We are light keepers. We are the ones that have been among each other for a number of years. Some of us just woke up recently. I didn't want to wake up because of the responsibility and the, and the, the activity that is related to the type of things. I ran away for a number of years. I can no longer run. And I, I am so happy to be here to express my humbleness. And for some of you that had questions, we, are, have, we have been going through an awakening phase up to this point. Now, in the beginning, our Space Brothers created a lot of things. And a lot of people, you probably have known that the chief, Golden Light Eagle, and I have been on many shows about like ancient aliens, many documentaries. What, it, what our purpose is to convey to the rest of the world that uh, we have had this knowledge for a number of years. I do not practice anything. It's just the downloads are given to me every day, every morning, every night. This morning, about 4 o'clock in the morning, I had a download from the, I had two beings come to me and said, you are here to cleanse what is going on. You, you, your purpose here, we have given you the go-between to go and tell your brothers and sisters that all is well. We are here and we are keeping touch with everybody. I, don't, I am not an eloquent man. I do not know how to express many things in, with other tribes, but we all know of one. We are all light people. It is very strange for me to be at this stage in my life. I am a scientist, I am an engineer, I deal with mathematics, laws, physics, whatever. But way back in the beginning, I knew that our forefathers, the star people, the, the ethereal beings, and in Zuni, for lack, we call them raw people, the people that have not been cooked. That's what we refer to them. So, so when we do prayer, it's for everybody. We have no, we are colorblind, we, are, we have no way of saying that, well, you are Lakota, or, or you are Choctaw, you are Hopi, you are this indigenous. We have people from all over the planet, and we are now at that stand, stage in our world that we have to be a one again. We talk about grandmothers. In Zuni, all our systems, are all, it's a metrolineal, it's a metroarchal society system. And we, we go around acting tough like we rule the world. Uh, no, uh, our aunties, our grandmothers, they're the bosses. You cannot see that when you go into the Zuni village. You cannot see that. The chief is out there, Golden Light Eagle was out there last year at my home in Zuni. We went through a lot of discussions and one of the things that we came to be is that we had taken many, many different paths to where we are at today. And we did not ask for this assignment. We were born into it. Some of us, like I say, had walked away from it or tried anyway because it's a hard job. But to me, I did not realize that it is one of the most treasured. It was, it's one of the most beautiful jobs that you'll ever have. And this is why I am here, and I am not here because I have been what would like to do myself. I am guided. I, I say, okay, spirit, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? I try writing things. It doesn't work. I try to say, I'm gonna do this like, I'm gonna present a technical paper. It doesn't work like that. So when I was going through my teachings to become a medicine man, I was kicked around and they told me, I said, you're still thinking with your head only. Speak from the heart. You will never learn the way you're trying to do. And uh, so, and so it, it was hard, but uh, after a while when, when, those, when they opened me up and that's where the spirit came in. And, and let me tell you one thing, spirit also have tricksters. 
And so when, when they were playing with me, I would get it, uh, and I would laugh. And that's what they want to do. Laughter among all indigenous groups is the, is the glue that keeps us together. And I have worked with, again, many, many Indian brothers and sisters throughout the country. And it is so profound that when I go into that, we are not concerned about material wealth. We are not concerned about material gain. We are as one, and we have respect for Mother Earth, and we were chosen to take care of since the beginning of what they call time. Nobody knows. And the recent things that are happening throughout the whole land is that where do they come to, to seek this guidance? They come to the indigenous tribes because they still have the knowledge. They still have the connection. We call them the Space Brothers. We call them UFOs. We call them the Galactic Federation. In our respective tribes, Indian bands and, and the tribal groups, we have names for all of them. We call them, for all lack of a proper term, we call them the creator. In Zuni, we call them the light, the light source. And so if you look at other writings of many other books, they're all talk, we're all talking about the same thing. So now we're at this stage in this whole world that we have to work as one. We are of one. We have to come back to the realization that from this point on, we are the ones that are supposed to be together. And I am, I am again very convinced that this is why some of us have taken the path to where we are at today. Each one of you individuals have a piece to the, of the puzzle. When you bring that piece of the puzzle to our conferences like this one here, when we talk to each other, we put those pieces of puzzle. And when we look at the, the overall picture, and all of a sudden it becomes clear. And that is all our purpose. Some of us have become so very humble that we do not. We do not recognize a lot of things when we are there. The main force that's going to continue this effort is our children. The youth that are now coming in, in in many ways. We started out with the indigos, then we went into the crystals, the rainbow. These people are w of different dimension. I have met some of them. And then some of us have been awakened like a big light switch had been turned on. And we are lost sometimes for a few few moments. But when we meet, I have met many people in my life up to this point. I did not know, but now I have. But one message from the people, I mean, the, the beings, is that we have to go forward. And we have, I think at the uh, last conference we had in, in Palm Springs, I, I told you not to have any fear. We cannot, be, we cannot have fear anymore. Nor can we hold back the things that has been with us in each one of us individually. We can no longer hold it back. That's why these gatherings we have to share. We have to talk to each other. And again, we are of one, and we can no longer afford to be our own separate systems. And that's why when I come to these gatherings, I am so thankful. And this gathering is about Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving to each other, our ways of our individual paths that we came here to put together the effort. And it's in the scientific term, we call it the critical mass. You are the critical mass. We are the nucleus. People look on up on us to say, where do we go from here? And uh, each in our own way have that piece of puzzle. Look at how many people are here. We talk about different modalities. We talk about curing system. I have taken upon myself. I did not know what I was getting myself into about a year ago. I have put together what we call 
the healers. These are people that are working people like all of you. These are people that do not have pieces of paper on your wall saying that I'm a doctor, I'm a, I'm a uh, psychiatrist. These are people that are God-given energy systems that we all have. And what is one thing that is so curing is the love and the touch. We have learned how not to do that anymore. Uh, and I go through these type of uh, sessions throughout, my, throughout many things. And in, back in Zuni, we have a very complex system. I have been preaching, so to speak, about we cannot deviate from that. There are so many outside interferences that are put forth every day. And uh, we have, some of us have taken on some bad habits. There's nothing wrong with admitting that you had a bad habit and get rid of that, come back to, to the path. I am not, again, trying to tell you how to live your life. We all know how to live our lives. But the message that I'm bringing them, the Space Brothers, is to continue to observe what is happening, each one of us. It looks, it's very simple. Do it by prayer. We have learned not to pray anymore for whatever reason. Number two is that we have to go back and look at each other and com combine our energies. Number three is that we have to go back and listen to what we had for strayed away from. My grandmothers were my excellent teachers. And uh, one analogy that um, I was listening to uh, gra Grandmother Jean yesterday about grandmother knows everything. And, and so in the old days when we were little kids, we would stick little things in our ear. And they would, tell them, they would be t teaching us, telling us, don't do that. You're going to hurt your grandmother. Well, when you're about a high, I said, what do you mean the grandmother? He said, your ear, it's your grandmother. He said, if you, if you hurt that, he said, you're, you're, you're going to hurt your grandmother. Well, I did not know that grandmothers, they hear everything. They know everything. You cannot fool them. And even, so, even those, w I tried many times. <laughs> and now I am, at, again, at my stage in my life, and I laugh about it. It is so simple. And of all the path that I took, I came back to the point of beginning where I was running away from me and I met myself. I was running away from me. And this is really, you know, I can go on forever about my life, what I did. And it's been a joyful, joyful journey. Yes, I have been in trouble many times. That's because I was curious. That's because I wanted to learn more. And that's why each one of you have that in your heart. Why do I need to know what, what is going on? What makes this thing work? I've been in trouble many times because I've, I've busted many things. I broke many things just to see what makes it tick. But all the teachings are so, they're so numerous. I have been taught in the academic way. When I was taking classes in physics, uh, calculus, thermodynamics, and things like that, you know, that, that's okay. But the question has always been, where did this come about? And so I went and did research, and it was given to us from the beginning. If you, a lot of people that have looked at ancient aliens, the question is, where did these things come from? You go talk to any indigenous people on this planet, they'll tell you where they were here and they taught us. That's what I did when I first took my medicine training is that I used to ask them, they say, well, how do you guys, how do you guys know these songs? They said, because they told us. And I said, well, who are they? Don't you know? I said, no, that's what I'm asking. They said, the Star Brothers. We didn't, we didn't make this up. We had a, we had a novice come in there and he, he said that, hey, that was a good, those are nice songs. When did you guys make that song? And we all looked at him like, where did this guy come in from? And so this has been all going on for thousands of years. Can you imagine that? It's not written. It's not recorded. Like this, 
drummers over here, when the drum starts beating, all that thing comes down. And it's right there. You ask me two or three days after we do our rituals, you ask me what those songs were, I wouldn't even remember. Only on this gatherings like this, when that full force comes about, we, we do this thing. So I've been kind of rambling along here, but uh, there I don't really have uh, any agenda. It's just that I would, I always want to make sure that everybody is connected. You are the light beings. Remember many years ago, uh, President Bush won, talked about thousand points of light. And I said, well, I wonder if he talked to some of our medicine men before he said that, you know. But no, uh, we cannot. We cannot tell others what to do. We are the nucleus. And so there's many different ways. You find your way of taking, uh, you can do that within your own home, your own self. Uh, the best way to do that when you're out here in, in the world, before you get home, before you enter your house, you cleanse yourself. And you say a prayer before you walk in there. And then always, always, bless their home when you come in there. You're like, like they're a living thing. We, all things are living. And you can, you can talk to yourself. My grandfather used to do that. He would go in there and in, in his way he would talk and he would say, how have you been? And he would uh, repeat that like, we have been very good. How have you been, grandfather? And he would act like the plants were talking to him and we used to look at him and say, what, what is he doing? So little did we know at that time when we, that he, he's blessing everybody. And my grandfather was a very, uh, very uh, spiritual man. And he taught all this. Grandmothers were like that. Before they, before they do anything, they, they would teach you. They would slap you and they said, you haven't, you haven't uh, talked to the grandfathers and the grandmothers yet. Why are you eating or you haven't given them food yet? That's, you know, that's, so we have learned throughout the way. So all I'm doing is I'm passing this on. But now in the community that we have, we all have to become, because nobody will come and tell us how to do that. We have to do it with each other. So that, that's my message. My message from the, the, the raw people we call them is that we have to continue to intensify our oneness and our love and to share. No longer can we keep our secrets to ourselves individually and as individual member tribes. We can no longer do that. And uh, forget about what the, the happening in the world. It's all an illusion. It's within yourself that is more important. And we are all family here. So that's my message today. And I, we hope that, I hope that we all get to talk to each other on this time of Thanksgiving, the Mound Builders, people over here, the, the nations that we talk about in our own tribes back here or among us here. Everybody is here. They're listening again. They're from all different parts of the universe. Time means nothing to them. Distance means nothing to them. They're here. So that, that's why uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to be here. And uh, I, I thought I was going to make it, but that's okay. And there, I, I think I st still haven't done my job yet. So thank you very much for, for this session.